it's me, Josh Herman. I hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to Noman Art Jam. Uh, we're going to be hanging out today, making some stuff on stream. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm working on today, uh, please feel free to ask. Feel free to, to type in the chat, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. Uh, Alex Alvarez hopefully will be joining us today. He's been having some power problems at his home. Apparently, they're replacing some lines or something, so he doesn't have power. Uh, but what can we do about that, right? Uh, anyways, we're going to be jumping into some stuff today. I had thought about jumping right into back into what we had been doing before a couple times, you know, several streams ago, uh, which would be ZBrush and sculpting characters and kind of doing that stuff. Um, but I think this is totally impromptu, but I think we're going to jump into some Unreal 5 today. So I downloaded Unreal 5. I've already got it set up and I got it loaded up, but I'm going to just kind of try to play around with some of the new features today, assemble something out of some kit bashed elements from Bridge, and um, just play around with it and see how it goes. So we're going to we're going to see if we can make something. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and open up, or not open up, share my screen. So we're going to get this over here, make sure everything's all good, close other programs that are taking my bandwidth and I think we'll be fine all right here we go all right I'm down here in this tiny little half window so I'm probably gonna move this in a second but uh, we'll just get that out of the way uh, so here we are we are in Unreal 5 we're gonna like I said we're gonna start trying out some of the new features with bridge the integration of bridge and just downloading some assets and bringing them in. So I already have some assets downloaded, but I want to try the new Nanite. And I also want to get uh, Lumen working and see how that works. So, uh, yeah, here we go. We're inside a wall. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing or anything about uh, Nomen, we have, it looks like, uh, one of our representatives is going to be in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, and we can, we can help sort those out. If you have any questions about what I'm working on, also ask that. All right, uh, I'm going to open up the content browser. Apparently, you can just hit Control and Space now to bring up the new content browser, which is awesome. It's always kind of in the way, and I like how that Unreal 5, at least at the beginning, uh, first look, this is not joking, this is my first time ever opening it. Uh, it feels just easier to use, and it gets this the thing that you had before where like the viewports are kind of uh, little boxes that you can move around. I like how you can get this out of the way, and all you have to do is click, and then it goes away. Uh, so we're going to make a new folder here. Uh, we're going to call this our Art Jam. And here we're going to make a new level. And uh, we'll call this Art Jam level. I'm going to go into it. It's going to ask me if I want to save. Uh, I don't need to save that because that's the default third person. And here we go, we have nothing. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's create a shape. A shape, let's do a plane. There's our plane. It's quite small. That's because we uh, have no lights. So we'll get some lights in here in a second. Let's create some lights. Skylight, that feels good. Uh, I think directional lights could be fine as well. I don't know why this isn't working, so we're going to have to figure some of this stuff out, or we'll just jump back into our third-person one. I've also done that before in projects where you just basically go in and completely uh, delete it and just start over. It's odd. You know what? I don't want to futz around with that for too long. We're going to make a new level. Let's go back and I'll show you what I mean by going into third person, go into maps. This is where we actually started, this is the example level. You can just come in here and just start deleting stuff. You can do it either in the, um, the outliner, the world outliner here, or not. We don't need these blocks. We'll, we'll keep that floor though. Delete this block, delete these stairs. Probably don't need a player start. But we should be fine with that. What do we got here? This is our light source. I don't know if this is necessarily the light source that we want. So let's play around with this and see what happens if we just delete this or hide it. So it's got some sort of a ambient going on. Create lights, directional light. We'll try start with that. Let's 
we have light. Somebody says, uh, careful, Ash Blossom says, careful when exporting textures. When I export roughness in RGB, the settings seem to be off, so scenes off, so sometimes you have to s fix that. All right, good to know. Thank you. Uh, are you talking about, like, you need to go into the map and ex edit it, or do I, like, need to reconnect it somewhere in the, uh, you know, the not the hypershade, but what is it called? The material outliner? Uh, we're going to open up the bridge. The bridge is actually pretty cool. You can come into the content here, and there's just a Quixel bridge option. So we're just going to open this up. We're, we are going to download some elements. This might take a... I'm not really sure if this will uh, do anything to like uh, the stream as far as like the quality of the stream. You can see all these things. A lot of the stuff that I, I downloaded or I've already downloaded... Uh, or have hearted uh, is from the previous short that I did, Wardens. And so even though this is downloaded, you can see there's an option here now in Unreal 5 called Nanite. So I can, uh, instead of doing a, two, a low quality, medium quality, or high quality asset, which you can also, I think, think of as like 2K, 4K, uh, 8K, uh, they have a Nanite option, which I think springs in the highest one. So we're gonna play around with that. But I've already made a bunch of snow stuff in my last short i want to try something different uh, ash is saying the roughnesses are set to rgb to to turn on R rgb and rgb sometimes you have to turn off interesting good to know this is in beta isn't it beta or is it an alpha i don't remember exactly but it's uh not fully released so we're gonna just kind of check out what they got here get out of here snow all right let's see what what kit we can play around with today you sir are a saint thank you brian we've got to have you back on the stream natural i think natural will be more fun today i kind of just want to try to make a scene uh using kit bash elements and uh mega scans elements I already did this. Where okay, let's, we can do a canyons one. The quarry, I think, is kind of like the the ones that they had done before. I'm not super versed in this, but let's go ahead and get started on. Let's just do Iceland. There's cool stuff here. I'm bouncing back and forth. Utah's cool. Let's just do Utah. All right, so let's grab a big uh, element here and bring something in. I can probably also use any of these to texture our planes. So we'll get, uh, let's, Canyon Rocky Ground. That seems fine. Ooh, this one's cooler. I like how there's like some, some stuff here. Let's get this highest quality and we'll start downloading that. Let's see how long these take. Not too long, but definitely gonna take a little bit of a time. Jake, you gotta come back to Noman. Yeah, please, you're welcome. You're always welcome back. Hopefully this uh, the download itself doesn't impact the quality of the stream. Something spooky. We could turn this into something spooky, maybe. We'll see what the lighting uh, does here. Curious to see how this plays. I was checking out some videos before stream, so I didn't look like a complete idiot, but I, I uh, haven't played with this ever. So I'm curious to see what this looks like. Add. Successfully added. All right, I'm gonna put this on my other monitor. Uh, I'll bring stuff over when we start talking about things. But it looks like we have this. Can I drag this on here? Oh. Maybe this is the uh, thing that you were talking about, Ash. Oh, there we are. That'll do just fine. This is actually a cube though. So we don't actually need our cube, so let's go ahead and create a plane instead. Shapes, plane. It should be roughly, oh, it seems like it's subtly higher than everything else, that's fine. Let's go ahead and get this uh, a little larger, a little larger. It's a full on workout here, and uh, we'll drag that on there. 
We do need to go a little lower. Uh-huh. Get that out of here. All right, now we've got a big old landscape here to play with. What is this? Atmosphere's fog. Oh, got to love Atmosphere's fog for sure. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's download another element. I'm going to get one of those cool uh, rocks. This is a cool rock. Nanite, download. I wish you could download multiple things at once. I don't think you can. I've never used Nanite. It seems amazing. I'm looking forward to bringing my own stuff in and using Nanite. But we'll see uh, how this goes. These are also really cool. Like this one. I'm also looking for the words here. Whenever I'm, I'm pointing at my screen, but you can't see. Uh, here it says massive, 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 huge. All right. This is a, like the, the size of the asset when you actually bring it in it is an important element of it. So I'm going to add. It says it's successfully added. I'm going to get this massive canyon sandstone cliff. Nanite, we're going to start downloading that. Well, that's happening. I'm going to jump over here now that we've got some stuff. You'll see it has made a Megascans folder for me. If you've never used Megascans, it's super easy. Uh, it seems like it's even easier in 5. So it has the assets that I'm downloading. Those are the actual 3D assets and the surfaces right here with all the maps. Looks like it's just doing... What is this? Some sort of a mask. And then we have our uh, material. Looks like it didn't bring over tessellation or displacement. It does have SSS in here, wouldn't it? Which is nice. Where were we? Bringing this thing in. So you should be able to just drag and drop this in. In case you've never used Unreal, it's super easy to uh, navigate around. You basically right-click and use your WASD to uh, fly. So let's make this bigger. Made it a little big, but that's all right. Not that direction. I think I swallowed our character. Oh, yeah. So now we have a better sense of what the size of this is. One thing to note about Megascans assets, if you've never used them, is uh, they are scans, so they're not going to be perfectly lined up to everything. Uh, you know, just, it's not really how it works. So let's just start getting something here. I'm just going to push it into the ground just a bit. Scroll through this, see if there's anything interesting in here. Can, uh, when you have an asset clicked on, you can click on uh, this to browse to it, and this, I think, is to open the textures. So I click to that. I can open up the textures right here. This is a global texture something. Parameter values. All right. I don't know what this texture is. Is DR texture. Does anybody know what this is? It looks like it's our RGB sort of packed... DPR, is that what this is? DPR. It sounds like displacement, but I don't know. All right, that other one should be downloaded now. Let's add that to our scene. Let's get a couple more of these. Download. We're going to have to bounce back and forth. It's going to be a little slow going just because we're actually downloading everything on stream. Uh, in case you can't hear, my computer is going to take off into the atmosphere any second. I don't know what this is. I think this is the Nanite itself, the software doing its thing as I've drag and dropped or attempted to drag and drop the piece in. This is a little slower than I expected it to be, but we'll see how it goes. Can I like escape out of this? Seemingly not. 
this other one loaded super quick, so I'm wondering if this is like a bug that I just hit, or if this is um, just taking a while. Oh, there it is. One thing I really, really, really like about uh, Unreal is just how easy it is to get nice lighting. And I don't believe, maybe I'm wrong, see how this is intersecting oddly now. Or is it just, why is this happening? Just a shadow? Maybe it's just the light that's in here by default. Ash is saying it's a uh, Unreal 5 is a bit problematic, just starting to use Lumen. Or you are just starting to use Lumen. This is the un the light that I added. I think I killed the other light. Maybe I just need to move it. Oh, it's probably because this is like not double sided, right? Cast shadows, you two two sided lighting, maybe. No? Okay. It looks like it's just going through the geometry because it's see-through. So I'm not entirely sure why that is happening. interesting one, isn't it? Alright, well we might have to play around with this differently then. Well, we uh, just start over with our lighting. Lighting. Light source. We had our directional light in here too. Let's just kill our directional light. It's, we had our light source, which I actually just turned off, I believe. Same thing there. If the shadows are off, sometimes it's because Unreal just accept Direct X and the normals are OpenGL, but because you imported from Megascans, I think it's not the case. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. That is a very frustrating little thing to happen. Not expected that at all. Huh. Alright, we might need a, to do a pivot and uh, go back to sculpting. I was hoping we could play around with this today, but it looks like there's going to be some bugs or uh, issues to figure out, which is annoying. We can still play around real quick, though. Our skylight, does this do anything? Looks like this needs some other things to set up. You know what, we're going to do this next stream because it uh, just isn't going as planned. I don't know why this would would be casting. I understand why it's doing it because you can, like, you know, do something like this. But that's going to dash a lot of the plans. So let's put this aside for now. Hello again. Welcome. We'll close this. save it all for we can get back to it later I do like a lot of the immediate improvements though just loading it up it's cool to see that there's uh, you know some immediate improvements from the UI standpoint which is awesome I am not using the most, most, most recent version of ZBrush because I wasn't planning to, you know, use it today. But we'll go ahead and we'll make a, a creature. Some sort of character. And, uh, let's see what we got here. 
I know you can't see, I'll be opening it up in just a second. All right. Get my tablet set up. Here we go. Will Alex come join today? Uh, we're hoping so, but he's been having some power uh, outages at his his home, and so they're swapping out the power lines, and that means uh, right now he just doesn't have power. So we're hoping he'll join, but no guarantees today, unfortunately. All right, this is our Dynamesh Sphere. So we're going to go back to a sculpting stream today, which honestly for me is totally fine. Just making it a little lower. I like to work at a very low subdivision level uh, to start with because I don't, I personally am not somebody who feels comfortable, you know, sculpting at the highest subdivision levels. Um, it just makes it feel like I'm sculpting in like a, a very dense mud. I know some people who are really excellent at it, but that is not the workflow that's best for me. All right, let's just explore some shapes. That is a very normal head shape. Let's try something different. Chat, anybody got some suggestions? Anything we could make today? Whether it's a creature, whether it's a alien, whether it's a monster, a demon, a robot, uh, anything? I'll switch to my brushes, my smooth brushes. I like the smooth, stronger brush. It's just super powerful. Walrus features. Creature. It's two kind of in the same, same area. I actually like using the uh, snake hook brush for this type of stuff at the beginning. It's... It's a brush that I slept on for a really long time. I wasn't a big fan of it, you know, basically until a year or so ago. Um, but all of a sudden, it just feels like a very easy to use sculpting brush, like a, a more powerful move brush in a way. Could be like a creature from the Avatar movie. Alien mummy. Ooh, okay. Swamp monster. Now we're getting some good stuff. All right. We got a lot of little things in there. Swamp monster, alien... Avatar, Walrus. All right, let's try this. I don't know if I'm going to use more than one subtool or not. I probably will. I'm just going to duplicate this one, just quickly move it out of the way, smooth this. My smooth stronger is going to obliterate everything in there. That's fine. And uh, now I'm going to use this as the body just to start defining shapes now if I do this it's gonna immediately make it look like a person or some sort of humanoid alien which isn't really what I'm wanting just because that could be their shoulders or something like that we're gonna just kind of bring in some form of a different posture I am looking forward to using Unreal 5. It is a uh, seems like it has some really great features. The walrus request was very left field, but I'm into it. And I think that kind of ties into the whole uh, swamp thing. Somebody said a swamp creature. And somebody said an alien mummy. So maybe there's something in there. I do like alien mummy, though. Don't get me wrong. We could... We can go for an alien mummy. Let's, let's combine it all. thing I always like about mummies is that you can just do a straight up mummy 
which is the you know the like wrapped humanoid person but you can also go for the more pharaoh version you know more like the accoutrement that's on there and uh do something that's got some like uh, very stargate or something right where you got some cool shapes and adornments and stuff that gives them a bit of a, a bit more to them so we're going to explore some of those shapes these all should be yep they are uh, dynamesh objects so I can come in here and I can smooth any of these if needed I feel like we gotta do something with like a tusk. It's looking like a triceratops. I can see that, that's fair. It's a fair assessment. Well, that's kind of a happy little accident there. Trying to find a shape language that I like. I'm going to go into my stroke for my uh, clay buildup brush. Go to stroke. I'm going to crank the roll distance up. Anything over one. And that will make it so that there's not that repetitive pattern to your uh, strokes. And that way you can get a more clean result. And for me, uh, when I want to maybe make some repetitive shapes like something like this, it's a really good tool for that. So I highly recommend using the... Uh, adjusting the stroke. I learned that from uh, taking Scott Eaton's class a long time ago. Don't know who he is. He's an amazing uh, anatomical sculptor and teacher. Maybe start just kind of creating a little bit of what this will be. Mask this off really quickly. I'm just going to pull it out. I'm going to switch to the uh, transpose lines. I just feel more comfortable with them for this type of work. And then we'll uh, make some arms here. Some of this, though, I do like to have that pattern on it. What was the advice that I said? Oh, uh, in the clay buildup brush, just a small tip, but uh, the clay buildup brush has this very repetitive pattern to it. You can see it kind of stacking amongst itself with all those parallel lines. If you don't like that or you want to use it, uh, the, the clay buildup brush has more of a detail brush. You can go into your stroke and you can crank up your roll. If it's anything over one, uh, it gives it a smooth result. And so that way you can kind of create these types of shapes for Art deco style shapes or some form of a repetitive shape. And uh, it's just kind of a nice tweak to a brush that gives it a totally different feeling. It doesn't take a long time to set it up too, which can be a huge pain. All right, let's uh, set up some polygroups. So I'm going to grab these. So these are going to be my arms. I'm going to hit Control w That will make a polygroup for that. That means I can basically mask these really quickly. And I can kind of come in here and start adjusting these shapes independently. And I can, with this, I can do a couple cool things. First, I can mask. and Maybe we could do it here as well. I'll hit Control w That makes another polygroup. So you can come in here. Mask something off, use the action lines, and maybe we can create some pauldrons or some shapes or something like that really easily and quickly. I don't know if I'm going to have time today, but we'll see it. if I can do a whole character probably just focus on the bust after a little while
kind of like the idea of this being a mask. Definitely need to pull out the neck though. So that it feels like it's actually connected to this thing. Right now I think it's just a mind flare, but that's okay. I think we needed to find if this is a tentacle or a tusk. We'll say it's a tusk. Because that was the request. Means I'm going to just inflate it a little bit and give it some more shape. on uh, Instagram today and saw some cool artwork posted by Jackson Z. Posted the uh, Winwu concept he did for Shang-Chi. I don't know if anybody's been able to go see Shang-Chi. I got to see it a couple weeks weekend ago, weeks ago. Right when it came out. I loved it. I thought that movie was great. Doing horns or tentacles and stuff where it's like this can always be a challenge because it becomes such like a key element of the character. Where if you don't get it right away, you're kind of, which I haven't, uh, you're going to be kind of basically fighting it for the entirety until you, till it sits. And when I mean sits, I basically mean there's a time when you're sculpting and you're working and at a certain point. It just works. Right now, this is not working, but we'll keep moving. Pablo TAS nine on Twitch is saying, uh, I was wondering, do you usually start in the concept of a character? Uh, or do you do some thumbnails in Photoshop? Uh, the way that I like to work is I like to start just straight up in ZBrush. So kind of like you're seeing here. Uh, not too unsimilar to what I was asking for the chat. You know, if you're working for a client or a director or a film or a movie or a game or whatever, um, they'll have a brief for you of what the character is. It's pretty rare where they just say, meaning rare as in never, or very close to never. Um, just make a character. So normally they'll say, yo, you know, it's so-and-so, and maybe this is what they're doing in the script, or um, this is, you know, what they're supposed to be doing, or some specific interactions they're supposed to have, or um, you know, they kind of give you some guidance as far as like where to start. So the blank page at least has some words on it. Um, And I like to start in ZBrush for me, just because I, I, I'm more comfortable as a sculptor. So I just feel more comfortable straight up sculpting and, and diving into some initial shapes. Uh, the result of that is that typically uh, in the concept phase, I don't produce as many options. Uh, but my options, I would say they're higher quality always. Um, 
but as far as like a rendering their 3D that can appear to be uh, more resolved. Um, but the thing that I that's a positive about working in concept in 3D is that you uh, you don't have to do the translation point, meaning uh, in the traditional pipeline of of working, you start in 2D and then you go to 3D. And uh, there's a, if you've ever been a modeler or had to model somebody else's concept or design or you know done fan art or something like that, you can find pretty quickly that, that it's challenging to sometimes get the shapes or the design or make it work. And so if you're doing it in 3D, the goal to the, the path, I guess, to the end product is, is actually I would argue faster, but it could go either way, depending on the, you know, the speed of everything. So yeah, I like 3D personally. Looks <laughs> like we're having a Nomen reconnection with... Uh, None of it in chair and Jared Krzyzewski in our YouTube chat right now. <laughs> Two amazing creature designers. Both graduated from Nomen. I don't want to put these lines here because it just makes it look like a frowny face, which is not what I was intending. So I gotta figure out what else we can do here. if I like this body with this head, but I think I can probably explore the head a little bit further. What if we flip it upside down? Sometimes when I'm working on just a head like this, uh, I will take the sculpt as I'm just searching for shapes and I will just flip it around in different orientations and see if it looks better that way. Like, is this more interesting? And then I'll hit Shift S on the keyboard. Uh, that basically snaps it in. So it's like, oh, is this cooler? Is this cooler? Is this cooler? Is this cooler? Uh, knowing that I can adjust them all to be better. I could probably just maybe rotate this a little. some of this shape but I'm not liking the rest of it <laughs> so let's continue let's take like what we had for the neck I am going to end up deleting that body Just gonna crank it way back here. And we're just gonna start turning this into something different. I do kind of like how this is like sticking out here. It's only September, but it is, uh, for some reason, it's starting to feel like Halloween already to me. 
I know it is for Jared because I saw you bought a 12 foot skeleton for your driveway so that's amazing congratulations on your your newest uh, addition High Priest of Cthulhu. Yeah, this is kind of getting very Ithalid Cthulhu-y vibes, which is not at all, like, at all what I really wanted to start off with, but I'm kind of okay with that. We're going to end up with some... I feel like it's going towards some brutish... Brute... Brood mother ring. I don't know, I'm trying to use the same word too much, but I, there's something in this shape that I'm starting to like. The head, it feels too big now though, huh? You know what, this is just gonna be a man thing. Redesign, I have a feeling. Wonder when they're gonna add man thing to the MCU. You could add one character to the Marvel Cinematic Universe that is obviously from the Marvel Universe right now. Who would you pick? Mine is not Man-Thing, despite what you see on screen. Kind of looks like a Star Wars alien. Yeah, I could see that. Star Wars always did these really interesting faces. Sentry. Ooh, good choice. McBubbles. And not even like a B tier. I feel like Sentry is like a C tier character. I guess it depends on the, the time in which it was written. some more of this to this and we're gonna definitely be using one of those cloth brushes later for some gross skin mine I think I probably made it pretty clear in some of my previous streams where I was sculpting a character uh, beta ray bill beta ray bill is my number one Edition. Aside from like the big ones, like I would choose, um, you know, the Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, X Men, all that stuff, of course. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna import uh, a model. Uh, let's import. A base mesh that I like to use. Probably seen this one before. This is my base man with shoes, which I think I just overwrote that. So let's uh, duplicate. Let's just make a star. Import the base man with shoes. Great. Now we will append it. Perfect. Amount. Ghost Rider. Adam Warlock. Ooh, excellent choices. Ghost Rider is a great addition, for sure. I mean, Adam Warlock is as well. They've already hinted, obviously, at Adam Warlock. I'm wondering if uh, that will come to fruition with uh, Guardians 3, maybe. Uh, what the reason I brought this in here is uh, Namor. Namor would be awesome. Um, I'm basically gonna steal these. Body, I'm gonna steal these body parts. This 
So I'm uh, polygrouping these, and then I'm just going to do... I'll duplicate this just in case I ever want it. Hide it. Come in here, do a good old group split. Sometimes when you're sculpting like this, I feel like... like I think uh, Paul from ZBrush does this quite a bit by having like a catchphrase or catchphrase as you say but <laughs> for some reason that reminded me very much of Anchorman the sports I don't remember the sportscaster's name from Anchorman I probably should but uh, whammo or whatever he does that would be a perfect time to add a whammo So we got these hands. They're not super important as far as the pose, but this is more just for proportion. I'll probably completely obliterate the fingers into something and end up, uh, you know, dynameshing this whole thing together, which is fine. There's not like a specific way. I get a lot of questions of, you know, what's the best way to do this or something. And there's not really a, uh, best way to sculpt or to do certain things a lot of the times it's just going to be up to the, the artist to do a way that they prefer i'm just going to try this let's rotate. okay hang on rotate That'll be fine. If you had to cast somebody for Ghost Rider, who would you pick? Fan casting session. I'd be upset if somebody doesn't say Nicolas Cage because I feel like, you know, got to bring him back. in here now. Ah, yes, the legs. Oh. Perfect. Just what we wanted. Maybe a tad big. Maybe not. Oh, I think we'll do like the little crouch position. soft on that mask and it turned into a very Gumby like performance I think I did one of these in the stream, the pose, is what the word I'm looking for, a pose like this, in a stream we did with Brian. I just love, it's so weird. I 
assembling a pose out of several little pieces also takes a little bit of time, so pardon the duck feet and the complete disarray that this is in right now. It's kind of like Gollum's pose, though. Is that a swamp thing? And uh, this is going to probably turn into some swamp thing. These little adv Adventure Time forearms that we've created here. Let's focus on this bit for a minute. is an interesting workflow. Uh, which part of it is interesting to you? I'm curious. I'm gonna erase that line. It just looks like a mouth. Let's give this a little more something, and then let's try to bring these together. Still building your silhouette. I'm kind of building everything all at once. Yeah, the pose, the silhouette, the, the whole thing, really. I 
guess I'm just trying to see what works. Trying to make something that's... The thing that's kind of reminding me right now is something that's kind of creepy, but also something that might, like, be a guardian. That might be like a... It reminds me of like a children's... Like, something would be like a Grimm's children's book. A Jabberwocky-style thing, you know? If you found this thing in the forest... It presented you something that you really wanted. It's getting very dark very quickly, but it's probably the music, let's be honest. Large and imposing, but not intimidating. I think it should be creepy and intimidating. That's kind of what I'm going, I'm, I'm attempting to get towards. You're saying your concepts normally take you hours. That's pretty normal. Uh, you know, on a good day, you know, a 3D concept, uh, people who are fast, you know, do one to two, you know, sometimes more than that a day. But to do like a quality one, you know, doing one concept and a full concept and a rendered illustration and all that taking a day is a pretty good clip for 3D. question is do we want eyes I don't think we want specifically eyes I think we want the hint of eyes so something maybe a couple points on this face the head is way too wide I think or is it not big enough let's bring our person back now if our person was yay, yay big we're gonna put him in the scene I think they should be a little smaller. We'll put them like this big. Oh, I apparently have stretched them out quite far. Let's uh, turn this on and let's just go the old 180 so they can be facing them. And then... Uh, Too small. That's probably fine. Something like this. So what we're doing this, we're going to block out the rest of this. Uh, I'm going to quickly. I think this character just I like it to feel like it's kind of in character um, of what they would be doing so I'll just probably just bring the arms down you know, maybe take the head and uh, tilt it up this thing probably almost almost certainly speaks to you telepathically. One of these little tendrils comes out and touches your face. Oh, that's so disgusting. I'm just thinking about it and I don't like it. Playing with the inflate brush, it's a little intense. Kind of liked that, whatever this is. And 
better than this. I don't need that, thank you. Just Z remeshing, or not Z remeshing, excuse me, dynameshing the whole object here. It's making it go up really high though. That's because it is doing the whole body. It's also projecting, I didn't realize that was on. So let's uh, buh, 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 go into our Dynamesh, turn off our Project, and just do the old normal one. Hello, I see somebody saying hi on Twitch. Hello there. Welcome to the stream. If you've never been to the stream before, uh, welcome to Art Jam. We're sculpting a weird creature today. Chetzar flat head thing going on. I also like to use the uh, timeline here to go back and forth and things. So I'm like, do I like this one more, or this one more, or this one more, or somewhere in between? I also like to use, uh, if you ever see me looking this way, that's because I'm looking at the stream preview, uh, which I actually use basically as like a very small window to to navigate the stream. And uh, I use it to kind of like evaluate whether or not I like my work at a thumbnail size. Like basically, it's much smaller on my screen. All right, let's, uh, let's just subdivide some stuff here. See if we can find a way to tie this in. And I'm going to use the, the damn standard or the Damien standard brush to start sketching in some lines. I'm not specifically looking for anatomy, even though I've been using a uh, humanoid base. I said, I don't think it needs to necessarily follow the laws of anatomy and physics. It just needs to resemble that. And probably right around now, I kind of like this like square... Maybe there's like a root. Somebody had sweat a swamp earlier. And I was you know, joking about man thing. Uh, maybe there's some swampy elements to this character. Some little stumps. Some things that live on the character. They might also give it some nice little geometric patterns here.
think like one of these. Here we go. Yeah, I think I got a, a storytelling moment for this. I think one of these will be like moving from here. And uh, we'll push it inside a little bit. Pokemon is that? That's a great question. I'm open to names if you have no, uh, names that you feel like would fit this. Probably not a Pokemon, but possibly a Pokemon. Check this out. And then this arm. We slightly move. It means I'll have to sculpt this twice, but this what it is. weird hand thing starting here so we'll start here and then here and now we know how far that hand is and we're going to reel it in and maybe we'll chop it here and because these aren't real bones You know what? We haven't done what we should always be doing. Saving. FX H Sculpture. Put the E in your Sculpture. Have a good night. Go get some sleep. There we go. So we got that part here. Now we need to finish this face, which I don't like these cheeks anymore with that thing. I do kind of like this. I think about a night, two hours left, so we got plenty of time. Plenty of time. To really figure out exactly what's going on here. Need to massage this for a while.
feel like these get in the way. So I'm gonna make a polygroup out of them and hide them. See ya. Cranking up my intensity here on my uh, clay build-up brush, and that way I can basically, you know, push this a little further. Get some details in there. It is going to destroy some of my base form, so I do need to be careful about that. So that's why I'll probably come in here and just like reinforce a couple of them. Also, crank up my uh, intensity on my damn standard brush. This cylinder head is the question.
some praying mantis eyes. Which I kind of like. I don't know if I, I love that. Definitely the face is very praying mantis now, or what, what would resemble the face is. I kind of just want to settle on a head shape. Head shape, and then um, probably take a break. Just a short break. know what you're going to get in these Twitch safe playlists. Going back and forward in the timeline here, just seeing if I like anything else more. this it's kind of expected though this is definitely weirder to a certain extent maybe we could add a little bit of that back in Everybody, we're gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play my short actually from the Unreal Fellowship while I take a quick uh, break, get some more water. We'll come back and we will detail. Probably just focus on details in the head, uh, just kind of this general area here uh, for the rest of the stream. So I'll see you guys all in two minutes.
everyone, welcome back. We're going to focus on some detail on this weird creature scene. Alright, so what we're going to do is we've got our head here, we got our little arms here. I'm probably going to merge those all into one thing, and I'm probably even going to merge this into one thing. I'm not going to end up changing the pose on any of this. This is really just kind of for the jam today, just to kind of get an idea out there. If I ever wanted to, I could always come back to this if I needed to. So I'm just going to put some quick roughness on these legs. And I am going to merge all of this stuff together. So I mean, this one, this one, you can see this the old body I had in here. Oh, wow, that completely changed. Let's delete that. So we're going to merge these three together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we basically have this character this character and we have this head that I never really ended up using so that can actually be deleted as well and at this point I'm just gonna save it just as a new version uh, this is just so I can have it just in case don't necessarily need to have it all right we're gonna dynamesh this thing uh, I don't have to dynamesh it, but I'm going to dynamesh it just because I want the arms to be a part of the mesh. Uh, because right now they're separate, right? So I brought those in and appended them. And then uh, what I'm going to do now is just geometry dynamesh. If I do this now, you're going to see this is going to happen. I'm kind of okay with that. You can also do groups and uh, see what happens there. And that tends to do a little bit better. But it does actually do exactly what I don't necessarily want to do. But it does give an overall better version of that, so I might just do that. Nice short movie. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Let's do 64. 64 with groups. Uh, it's separating these. this either though. Meaning like getting way in here and sculpting that and making that look better. We'll do the groups and I'll deal with the tentacle things as a separate object. sense as we get into the details here all right cool uh, we're gonna focus on this head area first this is still pretty low as you can tell so what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to uh, just start adding details I can come in here I'll probably end up separating it I said I wasn't gonna do all this but I'm, I'm ending up doing it anyways um, I could have just kept it as separate meshes and not dealt with all this but I've made a choice I'm going with it. Um, pull this in. BM, no, comma, BMT goes to the move topology brush. So you can quickly grab other meshes, push them in. Maybe at the end or near the end, I'll just merge it all into one. what I've done though. It's just not working in the way that I was hoping with the Dynamesh. Eh, whatever. Alright, let's get into details. Focus on this. I might end up splitting these back out just so I can focus and have higher uh, subdivision levels total. I'm just going to do it one subdivision level now though 
and start diving into details. Uh, I'm going to hide probably everything else except for this for now. This is fine. Use the Damien standard brush as I'm getting pretty close to this thing. I'm going to use a lot of the existing shapes, some of which are happy accidents, uh, to begin details. So I'm using my Damien standard brush. It is changed, turned up real high. I'm just going to start curving. I'm going to need another subdivision level though. So let's do it. trying to define right now is what this actual material is. So is this a carapace? Is this a root? Is this a, you know, what exactly is something? to be, I'm going to go with some sort of a carapace or a rocky hide or something like that. So I'm just going to, using alt on this brush, I'm just kind of adding some of that textural detail here. And then uh, if I find an area that I want to carve, I just carve. I turn this down a little bit more, maybe 40. really light I can. What do I think about Cintiq tablets? Sounds like I met you a while ago, Isaac, at, uh, at Noman once. That's awesome. Um, what do I think about Cintiq tablets? Do I ever mess with them? I have messed with them and I do like them. Uh, my, I have a couple complaints to be honest, but the the complaints are can easily be out, outweighed by your preference or something you like. Uh, my complaints with them, <laughs> first off, uh, is they get the screens at least can get hot. Uh, if you're working on it for you know several hours a day, if you're doing a full work day of eight hours on a on a Cintiq, I have found that it it can get hot. Um, and it, when it gets hot, sometimes it gets sweaty, and sometimes when it gets sweaty, it gets sticky. So sometimes you'll be doing this, you know, if I'm drawing, doing this, and you get this sort of like feeling on your hand, which is really uh, uncomfortable. I don't really like that. And then uh, you, the, what a lot of people do to combat that, you'll see this is they wear these gloves, and it's a glove that basically only will cover uh, the pinky and it goes around like here and sometimes it'll be the the ring finger as well uh, so that when you're drawing it as a they're sort of made out of like a, not microfiber but some sort of a cloth like a, a smooth cloth that you might clean your glasses with or something and uh, that makes it so that you don't stick to the tablet so that's my first complaint uh, the second complaint with the Cintiqs is the colors have not been great in his in history. They've been a little dim, or they've been just kind of slightly off. And then my third complaint I don't really have 
have a third complaint. I think it's just mostly at the colors. The colors and the heat. Oh, I lied. The third complaint is that my hand gets in the way. I think after sculpting for so long with a tablet where there's nothing else on the screen, um, my hand getting in the way is all of a sudden like an annoyance where it used to be, you know, the, the norm uh, with drawing, right, especially. But your hand gets in the way, which can actually be a little bit of a throw off. You might hear that from other people as well. Um, I do like them, though. That, that being said, I think if, uh, and I've used one before, I purchased a couple. Uh, currently, I'm just using a tablet. I ended up switching to a larger tablet. Uh, this is a... It's this size. I think this is a little large. Um, I ended up switching to a larger one. I used to use a medium, but now that I'm... I've also graduated up to a 30... To two... Well, this is 127 and 130 inch monitor. And uh, I've just found that if I'm using monitors that are bigger, probably than 24 inches, for me, especially two monitors, uh, the larger tablet size is just better workflow for me. But they are great. Uh, I almost got a Companion Pro, I think it's called Studio Pro, not Companion Pro, the Studio Pro. Uh, early pandemic to be able to travel and to have a, a workstation that's combined with a, a tablet. Um, I didn't end up doing it just because of cost, but they are cool. I don't, you know, I don't really see one as necessarily being better than the other. I think it's just uh, preference, whatever you like to work in. And you know, if you can afford to try one or can rent one or find one that a friend has, they're, they're most certainly worth exploring. Details. This little tip is I don't like to zoom in too much, especially at the beginning. I think using a, a broad brush you know, or a big distance, you'll be able to get some of these. Like especially like here, this is like a totally open canvas, right? Just kind of being at a distance uh, for me has always helped to kind of know what detail you're laying in, know what level of detail you're laying in. Uh, otherwise, if you're zooming in, you know, and you're super zoomed in and you're, you're adding your detail, you'll, I'm sure you'll get quality details, but it's hard to know what it's going to look like in the scope of things and what it looks like along next to all of the other stuff. Uh, Christoph from YouTube is asking, you're curious with the new, I think it's called Huion, Huion. I don't know the right term for that or the pronunciation for that, uh, but it's like the competitor tablets with QLED and HDR. Uh, I'm happy that there's a competitor on the market, I'll be honest with you, just because I think Wacom's obviously dominated the market forever. Uh, they're great, but it's nice to see somebody else coming out with stuff that people are beginning to use, and uh, that can only be good for the industry. So, I am also curious to see...
Should we try out some of those cloth brushes? I think so. Let's try them. So the cloth brushes are obviously for cloth, but for doing stuff like what I'm kind of exploring in here, I have found them to be pretty cool for organic skin creatures that are going to have some wrinkles in that. Uh, so we'll go to cloth. I think the one I've used the most is... What is the one I've used the most? Nudge. So you'll see it doesn't work on the higher subdivision level. It kind of does, but it functions realistically more like a move brush. If I go down a subdivision level, still nothing. If I go down a subdivision level, now you see that I can just kind of make these. So you see I'm going up a subdivision level and it doesn't do that. Go down a subdivision level and it does. Uh, probably in this instance you would turn off symmetry. But it's really just nudging, almost like there's a skin on the surface. I don't like this design, but you can see kind of what it does right away to get some really cool effects. But that is more on a macro scale as far as like you know, the read of the size of these wrinkles. I don't really want that there, but let's move it on. Let's move along over here. Some little details here. I'm sure this would be could be great. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I should have had symmetry on there. Nuclear Divide is saying they're great. The, the Huey, I'm going to say Hui. That's the way I'm going to go with it. Huions uh, are great if you don't care too much about color accuracy. So there you go. Color accuracy is interesting. I've heard people go about it both ways. You know, some people are super uh, adamant that you know, whatever they're working on needs to be color corrected and uh, color balanced to match certain profiles or certain things. Uh, and then other people that I've talked to have said that they don't care and they don't even think that that's needed uh, because there's so many different ways that people look at it, it's, unless you're making like a major film. Um, the best, especially if you're doing, from my experience, the best thing to do if you're um, trying to find one especially for images, is your phone. I know it sounds weird, but just send the image to your phone.
such a weird brush, just like this. Thank you for auto-saving that one. Okay. these two things together kind of try to get another like shape that's connected in here was that a custom brush no that was the cloth nudge brush cloth nudge is somewhere I just had it selected but it is a cloth nudge it only works on lower ish subdivision levels but uh, it basically pulls it keeps the form relatively in shape, but it bunches and crumples and nudges all that stuff into uh, where it, it's expecting you to take it, which is pretty cool. So I love it for creatures like this. And you don't need to go all full, full ham with it, but you can do some pretty interesting things where it's you know, creating shapes or wrinkles or a pattern or a texture or something that's just slightly off. And it can still create those areas of rest that you want. higher subdivision level, I'm going to smooth some of this out. I'm kind of put in here and this really subtly, that's what I just did with those wrinkles. This is kind of a fun one. It came out of nowhere. This was not the intent for the stream today. We we're going to be jumping in on Real 5, but we we're in for the first time and just kind of exploring some stuff live. I feel pretty comfortable in 4, but there were some weird errors that were happening that I wasn't, uh, didn't expect to encounter and didn't want to try to troubleshoot on stream. So we'll probably do that in one of the next streams. forward to playing with Lumen and looking forward to playing with Nanite and just kind of seeing how all that stuff works and uh, it seems like the potential there is really high.
change it to a different matte cap. Not really for any specific reason, mostly just for myself to change up the, the look of how it's going. Give me kind of a break from what I was looking at. Sometimes when I look at for something, sculpt on something for more than, you know, an hour or so, uh, my eyes kind of get blind to it. So I end up kind of needing to do some mind trickery, Jedi mind trick on myself to basically keep myself going and not getting too caught into the same things. Fine mat caps can be really helpful for that. I think we need like a uh, I don't really want to put an eye in there. Maybe just like a couple of these things. tryptophobia stuff in it and through that I've learned that a lot of people have tryptophobia so apologies if these little dots are freaking you out is it weird if the creature looks if you think the creature looks slightly friendly actually no that's somewhat intentional slightly intentional These little tentacles from the front look cool. From the side, they do not. So I'm going to work on that next. I feel like if you know, this is some sort of a, a being that maybe is giving a gift or is pretending to give a gift or it's some sort of like ancient thing that lures people in. It could be a lot of different things, really. But... Um, In all of those stories, I think there has to be some sort of an appeal to that being. Otherwise, the people who fall for it would never fall for it. Even if it's like, you know, a big crazy demon, it's like they're giving them, they're offering them something. So, no, not weird at all. And I think I might at this point even just uh, do one of these. It is, you know, if I were to do this for a sculpt or for something different, like for a production sculpt, I wouldn't necessarily want to break symmetry. Something like this, I think it's okay. Are you planning on doing the human as well? Uh, no, I'm not. I put the human in there uh, mostly for scale reference, just to kind of see what we're doing. And then I thought it'd be interesting to turn it around and then just kind of happenstantially. That's probably not a word, but um, just by, by uh, luck, I guess, put this in there and it seemed to, seemed to feel normal. We have about one hour left, so if you're just joining the stream, welcome and hello, and welcome to Noman's Art Jam. Uh, my name's Josh, in case you've never been here before. We're just sculpting a creature today. 
and ZBrush. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. I'll be, this is live. I will be answering any questions that come up in the chat. so I can make it easier to hide it. Do I have any favorite matte caps for 3D prints? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, favorite matte caps for 3D prints? Uh, I use these matte caps, which are just the Z matte caps. Uh, these are by somebody called Zbro uh, from ZBrush Central, uh, which I found a long, long time ago. You can probably find them if you searched Zbro matte cap in Google. Um, I use these. The reason I like these is they don't have any... Um, cavity in the a lot of the materials if you go to material modifiers uh, you'll see that the cavity detection which is says at zero uh, will be cranked up right so if you go to like this one the default material and you go to material you'll see that the cavity detection is at one with this and this is a negative five if you put these at zero or you just adjust these what you'll see is that it basically uh, changes the way that the material actually reads and it's creating, as I adjust this, uh, the shading. It adjusts the shading to highlight the cavities and, and or to highlight the crevices or the or things. So like you can see like around here, especially, uh, this is one area where the cavity is being shown a lot more than something like this where it's pretty subtle. So one of the things that I look for in a, a cavity, and this is kind of something I look for just in general when I'm sculpting, especially if I want to take this out of ZBrush, um, is something that has no cavity detection or I uh, remove it entirely from my, my mat cap. So if there is one that I like for some reason, there's some cool ones in here, uh, like the mat cap green clay. You can see this one is an interesting one, but it has cavity detection. So if I turn cavity detection off, it's a much more natural looking sculpt. And you'll see in like the Fresnel, meaning the edges of all this stuff that was being getting cavities. Uh, if you turn this off, it doesn't happen, uh, which is much better. So, yeah. It just kind of gives it a more natural feel. So I use matte caps most of the time. Uh, I do occasionally just use the standard materials, the basic material, the skin shade material uh, is really good. Uh, it's better for me if it turn it to gray or like a slightly off gray uh, because the white by default can get blown out a little bit so I don't typically uh, use the white I might put a little gray on it and that's a little easier to just in general I think to look at for a long period of time um, the nice thing about these in case you don't know the difference between a matte cap and a standard material is that you can adjust the lights on this So that's the best part of this for me. Uh, one of the things about 3D printing when you're 3D printing 
uh, with your materials and, and stuff is um, probably more of a tip just for generally 3D printing than it is like mat caps for 3D printing. Uh, but take it, take the object, use a, use a mat cap, use a material that has uh, no cavity detection, isn't getting blown out, it's not super dim, it's not super overblown. Uh, and then what you want to do is actually size the object that you have on your screen to the real world size in real world. That means it's a little weird, but what I mean by that is like take a ruler and say you want your print to be three inches tall, put it next to your monitor, and then size the object so that it would be three inches uh, tall next to the ruler if this is the ruler. And what that does is uh, you get to see the detail. You get to see how much of the detail is actually going to be there, and you get to see how much of the de de detail is very likely going to be lost. Uh, and it'll also give you an, some insight into um, if you want to or if you need to enhance detail. Uh, there's easy ways to do that. We can even do it right here. I'll just show you on the, the head a quick, easy way to add or enhance detail. Um, all you got to do is you come in here, and you go to your masking panel. So I'm looking for the word masking, which is evading me and you're probably all finding it before I am masking uh, and then I'm going to do mask by cavity I'm going to turn off the blur or turn down the blur and you'll see that this is kind of what this looks like I'm seeing there's some interesting faceting still happening here so I'm just going to smooth that very quickly mask by cavity make that go away I'm going to invert my mask you'll see that this would basically be a, the opposite of a cavity mask so you kind of see this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the mask, Control H, and then I'm going to go over to my inflate brush. For me, that's hotkey six. And I'm going to go down really, 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 really low to like number three on your intensity. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start brushing over this. And depending on how far you want this to go, uh, this kind of works like a cavity mask where essentially everything that's not being masked, right, which is all this stuff, it's being pushed outwards. So you can enhance your detail just a little bit by doing this. Now if you want to get a little crazy, I'll turn down my smooth brush. I'm on the smooth stronger brush, so I'm turning this way down. Um, you can also smooth while your mask is on. So if I really push this so that the detail, you know, because of the mask and the, the lack of polygons here, it's not going to be the best, but uh, if I push this really far and then start smoothing, uh, what you'll see is it kind of creates a kind of a natural textural kind of look where you see those forms and they basically start intersecting, putting my fingers together and overlapping. That feels uh, pretty natural, so I like doing that as well. But just generally, um, masking by cavities. Let's see, I had that at the wrong button. I'm trying to get my smooth brush back. And you can kind of subtly pump all your detail. And the nice way of doing it with this mask is it's controllable just where you want it to be. Obviously, you can go inverse as well. You can invert the mask, hide that, and use your alt or normal. And you'll start finding some interesting ways to gather or create details that were not necessarily there. Like these extra little lines right here weren't there, but they're kind of interesting. So maybe I want to keep that. So that's the way that I like to do 3D printing or at least evaluate things for 3D printing. Here I've cleared my mask and now I'm smoothing it very, 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 very low because my brush is incredibly strong and too much and I'll just obliterate it, which is what I don't want. I appreciate the tips, no problem.
Do you ever worry about topology at the beginning of your workflow? No. No, I do not. Um, it's not at the beginning. I was trying to come up with something, but yeah, not at the beginning. I think, you know, especially if you're sculpting like this, like what we're doing today, finding a form, finding shapes. No. You want to make the art the best it can be. And topology can get in the way. The only thing that I would have considered and probably should have done and might even consider doing is um, using Z remesh for this. That would have been a little bit better, you know, for the head especially. And all these little tentacles are, they're dynamesh. So that's why these smooths are looking kind of weird. I'm using it as part of the design, but if it was uh, a proper tube, which you can see it is not, that's why it's looking weird when I'm smoothing it, is because there's these triangles that don't really like to smooth it the same way that everything else does. So not necessarily at the beginning, unless I feel like I really blocked out shapes uh, that I'm not going to change. Uh, coincides, coincides, coincides from Twitch says, uh, say you would use this model in a game engine, would you retopo it in ZBrush or use some other software such as Topo Gun? Um, for me, I would probably retopo it in another piece of software. Uh, you can use ZBrush, it's totally capable. For me, I just feel more comfortable doing it in a Maya or a Topo Gun or something like you're referencing. But that's all about comfortableness, it's not necessarily about which one's better. ZBrush, over the past years, decade of course, has uh, improved so much of their uh, production tools, like retopology tools, and uh, their UV, UV Master is incredible. It's so fast, so easy to use, and it gets the UVs really flat, which is, uh, is more catered about now often than it is about packing UVs into like a tight shell. Even in games, mobile games may be different because you're, you know, have such limited space, but in a game where you're using tileable textures, you know, PBR materials, uh, you know, that are being called in through masks or something like that, just flat UVs is what you want. So that's, it can do all of that for you. There's not necessarily a reason to leave ZBrush. How much time do you spend in the day in ZBrush? Well, uh, not as much anymore. Uh, but when I was working production, I would spend, depending on the project, eight hours, 10 hours. I think that really depends on the project, what your what your needs are, what you're going for.
Do I still use Maya for hard surface? Uh, occasionally, yeah. I've been getting more into using Z Modeler and uh, Live Booleans. It's incredibly powerful, which is the reason I wanted to, to dive into it a little bit more. Uh, but for me, when I'm going, I kind of started as a modeler. I actually started my career after uh, graduating from Noman. Uh, that was my first job, and so that was all Maya. Poly hard surface modeling, modeling stuff from scratch, from cubes and planes and, and nothing. Um, and so that's where I kind of got, I just feel, I still, I still feel pretty comfortable in that world of uh, poly modeling. And so for if, if I'm going to do something that's more of a final resolution or really tight, clean model, uh, I don't, I, I haven't spent enough time in ZModel or you know, cleaning up hard surface elements in ZBrush to really make them uh, as clean as I can in Maya. But I know it's possible. I just need to invest more time there. Do you keep an eye on anatomy if you work on projects like this? Also, which anatomy courses, books, would you recommend to better your craft? Um, I'm keeping a general eye on anatomy for a project like this, meaning I'm thinking about, you know, how muscles insert to, into each other and the general layout of, because I did go with, you know, arms and legs, uh, where some things might overlap or where, uh, you know, that's kind of happening. I don't really like what I just did to that neck. I just spent a long time doing it. Uh, so I do keep an eye on that. But it's not necessarily something that I try to keep on, like, you know, this is the where the sternocleidomastoid goes, and this is where the, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing that uh, with a project specifically like this. I'm just going to put a couple shapes in here. rest just kind of be subtle. Um, anatomy resources and books. Yes, I have a couple. Let me find you the one that I will try to pull out quickly because I use it, or was using it just the other day, which means it's probably not where I remember putting it. Here we are. Yes. This is my favorite figure drawing book. I think a lot of people uh, get interested in um, sculpture and they want to find anatomy books and so they look for anatomy anatomy books. But I actually find that figure drawing is uh, the best choice for that because you'll get, you'll get your anatomy knowledge but you also get how to make a uh, compelling figure and posing and it has a little bit of everything. But this one is my favorite figure drawing and invention by Michael Hampton. Really, really good one. Uh, just give you a quick insight into it. Um, but the reason that I like it is just because it's broken down in a way has beautiful illustrations, um, but it also has. Uh, so I'm trying to find the right page. skipping past a bunch of good things, trying to find like the perfect thing to show you. Uh, but they talk a lot about planes, which is a big element of sculpture, and they talk a lot about uh, action lines. Um, but they also break it up into a very digestible manner, Michael does, uh, as far as understanding what things do, and it also showing you, uh, you know, what it kind of looks like in an actual character, but also like the different parts of it. So uh, highly, highly recommend this one, which is figure drawing. 
uh, designed and invention by Michael Hampton. Uh, other ones, if you're just interested in general anatomy knowledge, one of the ones that are, are is, you know, uh, we teach at Noman and uh, or reference at Noman uh, is George Bridgman's books. So uh, George Bridgman's books look like these. And there's a whole series of these from the human machine to heads, features and hands and faces, and there's all this kind of stuff. Uh, but Bridgman really, really talks quite a bit about, uh, as well, talks about planes. So you can see this is one of the first pages up here, but you can kind of see how he's breaking the head into a planar square head. And that's really re applicable for a sculptor because um, planes, you know, they're obviously a huge thing in, in painting as well. Um, but they're huge in sculpture because that's one of the best, or it's, it's how you make a, a solid sculpture with your primary, secondary, and tertiary forms. So Bridgman and Michael Hampton are probably the two uh, that I recommend the most to everybody. There are some great anatomy anatomy books if you're just looking for pure anatomy books. Um, but for, you know, to, there's the whole... Uh, anatomy for artists there's Bern Hogarth there's a ton that are out there uh, but for me I prefer something that's more based around figure drawing because it's more for artists anatomy for artists is good things like that I just don't really love the idea of trying to learn and for me I don't think it's necessarily important to learn the names at least not, where, not at this point for me Uh, QWER4321 says you feel like basic forms are the most important thing lots of people just try to start from a pinky or a button on a shirt yes I agree um, primary secondary tertiary forms are definitely the thing that you should focus on if you don't know what that is look up what a primary secondary and tertiary forms are uh, it's, in, it's, it's essentially the one, twos, and threes of what people talk about when they do landscape, plein air painting. It's the very similar mindset to talking about line weights with one, twos, and threes. Uh, if you know anything about any of that, you'll it'll click pretty quickly once you get into it. But I would definitely recommend that for sure. Seven minutes of bird noises. It's not what I wanted. All right, let's get into a little different vibe for the last uh, 40 or so minutes. Let's find if I can get one of these. There we go. Yeah, this monster's big. Um, I've hidden most of it because, you know, I didn't want to sculpt the rest of it, frankly. Um, and just such limited time. Three hours is, sounds like a long time, and then you, know, you get into it and it's quite a bit. So I'm probably just gonna leave this out now. It's like a pin. What was uh, 
Let's see, what would you consider sculpting in the first year as a first timer slash learner? Good question, really good question. Uh, anatomy. Anatomy is going to be the first thing that I'm going to recommend to everybody. Uh, obviously, we just talked about some anatomy books. You can always reference those. Those are fantastic. Um, I should have done the other side of this cube. Yeah, I'll do that. Sorry, now I can focus. Um, anatomy is definitely a big one. And so I would start on uh, bones. Bones are easy, and I don't mean like sculpting a bone, but a skull. Skull is the easiest one to do because there's so many references, they're cool, um, they're fun to make. So I would definitely start with a skull being like one of the first things to sculpt. Uh, from the skull, you can start doing other parts of the body uh, as different references, your master studies, your master copies. And uh, some of the things that you can do with that is going to be um, some, an actual, actual exercise that I've done a couple times in school was you sculpt the skull, that's one class session maybe or one exercise and then next time you do all of the muscles on the skull. Uh, so start building out where they go to, where they attach to. And then after that, uh, add the fat and the skin to the skull in the next session. And that can be you kind of starting to understand uh, what it's like to like make it look like a real face now, but have the understanding of what is underneath it, whether it's a skull, whether it's uh, the muscles in the face, whether it's the fat uh, pads and where that is and where they aren't on the face, where the bones protrude more and less, uh, and it's a good exercise. Then from there, I would just start doing torso studies. You see there's a lot where it's uh, you know, from like a no head, no arms, those are all cut off. Uh, and you know, cut off at the thighs, mid thighs, and do a torso study there. So you start understanding the the muscles in the core of the body, how they go from the insides to the outsides, uh, you know, with the deltoids and the lats and the traps and all that stuff does, uh, and then all the muscles in the, the buttocks and the hips and all that stuff. That's hugely important uh, if you're interested in characters. So I would always start with skulls, graduating up to faces, and then doing anatomy studies, and, and starting there. That's what I would do. Let's do our thick skin feature. I liked playing with this before. And let's go into our, I think it's called thick skin clay. Yeah, thick skin clay. I clicked the wrong button. Uh, QWER says, With a monster like this, I guess the audience doesn't care as much about anatomy. Some people, or people seem to be the most critical of something they saw already, like cats or dogs. You didn't say dogs, but yeah, you're not wrong. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, if it's something that people have seen before, all you really have to you really need to nail it. That's why things like a likeness is really difficult. Like really getting a likeness that looks fantastic is a true art form. Um, doing something that's you know, maybe more like this, where it's a combination of things and you're really not entirely supposed to know what it is, uh, that's a little easier to, to fool the audience or they'll be lazy as a designer or, or whatever. For me, it's mostly today about laziness of choosing something that people won't necessarily pick at too much and also not feeling like I need to uh, describe the whole thing so I'm going to duplicate this it's going to sit exactly on where the other one was 
try something here. Since we're just making a little diorama, I'm just gonna mask the edges and see how this goes. Most monster. What, is, what are they trying to say? Monster? Haunted horror movies? I guess. Um, most horror movies and stuff like that put creatures in the dark. For obviously, it's creepy, but it's because of the unknown factor, right? When you see a creature, it's out in the, the sky and the light, and you can actually see what it is. It makes it less creepy. It makes it less scary. Yeah, the toad-like legs. We did. Uh, we did say a swamp, or somebody said a swamp earlier. Somebody said uh, something spooky. So kind of. This is all a lot of earlier uh, chat. Earlier chat references. No, not references. Is that the right word? Uh, yeah, references. Earlier chat references kind of coming to fruition here with sort of a spooky swamp creature. Uh, and I'll probably come in here. I wouldn't even turn so much off and adjust some of these shapes. to make some uh, vines or whatever sticking out through this. You could also use the insert coops, insert tubes brush. I'm really mixing my words today. Um, that would be another one. The goal of this is to basically make it so that if the character, the human character, didn't see this other hand here, we could pretend that uh, this one is lurking. Any 
tips for building out a strong portfolio? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, the biggest tips for building out a strong portfolio is don't go crazy with the amount of stuff that you're putting in there. Uh, know what you're trying to get a job for. And um, if you're questionable about it and you think it might not be good, don't put it in there because professionals almost certainly won't think it's good. This is for students, obviously. Students trying to get their first time job. Oh, I didn't have perspective on. That's okay. Uh, when I say don't go crazy, what I mean by that is uh, don't try to have 50 pieces in your portfolio. Don't even try to have 10 pieces in your portfolio. I would say aim for five. Five good pieces would be fine. Honestly, two good pieces will be fine. But they have to be good. That's really important. They have to be good. Uh, if, it's, if the lower they are, the better they need to be. If you have five mediocre pieces, you know, let's think of this five, seven out of tens versus two 10 out of tens, which one will get you a job first? Probably the two 10 out of tens because they're 10 out of 10. And so the employer there now knows or expects that when they hire you, you're going to produce 10 out of 10 work. If you have five pieces that are seven out of 10, your potential employer knows or is expecting that you're going to produce seven out of 10 work. If you have five pieces and there's a seven, six, eight, nine, and a two, you're not gonna remove the two. Oh, hello. It looks like hello. your power is back. Welcome. Uh, man, unexpected weird no power day. <laughs> yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Seems like it. Uh, yeah, but it came back like uh, half an hour ago. I guess we have a new power pole on the street. Well, that's nice. So you got some jamming music playing. Yeah, we got some cyberpunk. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> I think, yeah. <laughs> nice. It had the, it has a icon of the Terminator on it. So that was what made me click on it. Okay. Damn. That's some <laughs> high energy. I was listening to that fantasy one for so long and all of a sudden uh, I was feeling a little sleepy. So I needed to change it up. It can be a, a rather soothing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's really pleasant. But uh, it's funny. I texted my neighbor this morning and then uh, at like 7.30, he's like, so uh, are you aware that the power is going to be out all day? <laughs> what? Uh, no. So yeah, I guess I have to get on the notification list with the power company. Yeah. So like, I guess they're replacing all the poles in the neighborhood. Yeah. So it's like one at a time and it takes a whole day per poll. So, cause this is the second time I've experienced this. Oh really? So they're going to be uh -huh. doing this more with the rest of them. I guess. So, I mean, the neighbor was kind of like, yay, new poll. I'm like, I don't know. My power has been fine. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, Except okay. for when they replace the poll. Yeah. I only have problems when. But uh, anyway, how's it going with you? Good. Just kind of making a creature today. I tried to jump into Unreal 5 and uh, I pulled in some bridge assets and the lighting was like going through the back of them. And I was okay. like, like, and I turned on your know, double sided and all that stuff to see if it would fix it and it didn't. So pivoted to Sculpton. A weird swamp um, creature. Yeah, it looks awesome. But yeah, it was interesting. I was playing around with it, and I pulled in some bridge assets, and they uploaded, font in, you know, going straight from the the Quixel bridge, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the content browser, which is cool. And but they were just not lighting correctly. So there was somebody in the chat that was saying like they were having some issues with the textures and other things that were happening. So right, yeah. I mean, I think uh, doesn't Lumen like have to be enabled in your uh, preferences for your project 
It, I think it does, yeah. But this was just like with the directional light. So That's it was weird. it was giving some weird results that I figured we'll do. Uh, I'll troubleshoot that off stream and then we'll try it next yeah. time. Yeah. But it was working. It was working good. Uh, I like the new layout and some of the even just the ease of use features that they have. Yeah. It's like feels more. Uh, the interface feels like your. Um, it's not so many small windows. Like you can collapse the content browser a lot easily, a lot more easily, right. and just feels like you have a bigger working space. Yeah, it looks. I mean, it definitely looks more modern, which is cool. Yeah. Because yeah, UI changes tend to be pretty rare in programs. Yeah. Oh, it's funny to think of you look at. Uh, Every now and then, something will pop up of like an old Nomen Workshop title, and I'll see <laughs> like the UI of like you know Photoshop or Maya yes. 10, 15 yeah. years ago. It's like, oh no, it has changed. Oh, it has changed a lot. It's like all these small incremental changes. Well, Maya used to be super bright. Yes. You know Photoshop which, too. Yeah, Photoshop as well. So I, I definitely like the the dark mode. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Makes, so you made you made you to today? I did. Yeah, we were uh, we just kind of made. Uh, what did we do? Let's see. I'll just, let me just save it. So if I undo this thing, it doesn't delete itself. I don't need that though. This is what happens when you try to save. So I started with this little creature here, a well, big creature. Cool. Uh, it's gonna take a minute to load it all. But I started with this head, and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some people in the chat were saying a swamp, something from a swamp. Somebody said a walrus. Somebody said um, a couple different things. Oh, this is all just after I started sculpting. Oh, it looks really cool, though. Thanks. So I posed it, and then it was kind of getting creepy, and so I uh, put in that little diorama, put that character in there just for scale reference, figured I'd turn him around and do some sort of a quick diorama. Let's see if I load up the previous one. I like that little round, hard thing on his shoulder. This thing? Yeah. Yeah, it was initially because I was doing sort of a Chet Czar head. Okay. Like a, kind of a this thing. Cause he's always got those like interesting like hard shapes, you know. Like this. Mm -hmm. so I'm playing around with that, but I didn't end up going with it. So this is what I was my initial base, and then sculpting it to this. Very cool. Having uh, actually having lunch with Chet on Saturday. Nice. That'll be fun. Seen him in a while. Yeah, I guess he's uh, finishing up. Whole bunch of new paintings for a new show at Copro next month. Cool. So that should be a cool opening to go to, but hopefully you'll get a sneak peek of some of the paintings at his house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I don't know what this shape should be. Like it's there. Part of me was like just like to like be so much detail, but like doing some like thing. Yeah, it's like a root, I guess. Like a trunk. That's cool. Then it looks like I feel like I've seen shapes like that on like the kaiju. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never saw the second movie. Did you? I did. I wasn't a major fan of it. I think it just... It's not a Del Toro movie at that point. I think it just was missing some of that love letter mm -hmm. to, to kaiju movies. Eyes on the shoulders. Yeah, see? Somebody says love Chetzar. Yep. How would you find reference for this environment? Uh, Google, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or a book. Just start opening books. Yeah, being good at searching on Google is a, its own kind of like kung fu. Google it's definitely fu. a skill. Mm hmm. 
but you just gotta use the adjectives that you're trying to convey and it's pretty effective so it's like mm -hmm. if you're searching for cave search for creepy cave or foggy cave or mm -hmm. you know Do you know, uh, I guess the question is going to be, what were you going to work on? Do you know what you were going to work on? Or are you going to work on, or what you'll work on for next week? Uh, well, I've got the thing that I started on stream like a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And so I've, last weekend was able to play with it a, a little bit. So I'll, before that next stream, hopefully I'll play with it some more. Um, cool. But uh, there I can share my screen if I... Put that out of the way and uh, share which screen that screen hide. Uh, let's see, is that there? Mm -hmm. Let's see. We've got this. Uh... So I, I don't remember. It was like a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> so where. I just kind of was talking about layout until so I just did this layout in Maya, just with a bunch of simple shapes, and mm -hmm. then brought this stuff over to ZBrush, all the individual pieces, just to sculpt them. And then they're now back in Maya after being oh. ZBrushed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, How dense like, the mesh is now. Yeah, but it's I'm still, you know, it's still only like, what? that many 700,000 polys or something like that. Okay. But I can turn off the wireframe just once we're in here. So it's a lot of pieces. Mhm. Mm but here, let me make them a little brighter so it's easier to see. There we go. You can see a little mm -hmm. bit better. But uh and then if I open the brush, I was probably going to work on this a little bit today. So I'll, I'll but basically, it's just a bunch of sculpting, so. And a lot of pieces. Mm -hmm. Finally using folders in the subtool palette. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> After I seeing like you use them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. They're a little weird to get them. used to, but they, they're nice to just clean it all up. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just hadn't, didn't realize I'd added them, so I don't know oh, when yeah. they did that. But thank God for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was just a lot of uh, just randomly sculpting little rock shapes. They're all fairly low res and they're all Z rematch. So they're all basically ready to go to Mixer. Yeah, I was going to say, are you going to use Mixer? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's basically here if I turn all this stuff on and turn this, I don't need that. that. Um, so, and then this stuff is like, you know, pretty far away the ones that are detailed a little bit more uh-huh what were the but ones anyway. that were farther away made with do you sculpt them you broke. like the yeah yeah i just have so many alphas so i've got a bunch of alphas that i made in world machine right um and then if i go over to here let's get that darker again go to and that's what it looks like in maya right now oh cool so so yeah, so I'm just using Gozu to go back and forth between Maya and ZBrush. Mm -hmm. And then so basically just blocking out all the shapes um, just to get the shapes generally to be what I want it to look like. And then uh, if I wasn't using Unreal, I don't even know if I'd use Mixer because like most mm. environments that I've done that are kind of, you know, make these, do this music making me feel like I have to talk about I was going to say. <laughs> that one's like the double, the double kick drum kicked in, and yeah, um, okay, we'll, we'll switch to lo-fi again. But yeah, like for most environments I've done in Redshift, like this is kind of all I would need to do in ZBrush because then I'd start texturing it and doing all the displacements directly in Maya mm -hmm. because I'd just be working to camera, so I wouldn't be like you know. But the thing with Unreal. Since the intent is to send this to Unreal, where I'd like be able to walk around, then all of a sudden, like you know, need to 
texture things so they look good from you know different angles and mm -hmm. so that's why i think i'll use mixer so it'll take a it'll actually take a little longer to set it up for unreal than it would if i was just doing like a still with redshift mm -hmm. so but uh you know let me turn off the interactive camera so so yeah so it looks kind of simplistic because it doesn't have any displacements yet or you know and then there's no set dressing at all yet ah. so so basically like zbrush is just for like medium and large things and then all like the small things will be set dressing that'll probably come from bridge right that makes sense yeah so it's pretty much like you know everything that we see is handmade and then all the tiny things will just come from you know asset libraries yeah and then i'm going to want to play with plants so i think that i'm going to probably play with uh Let's see, maybe play with Speed Tree a little bit because I still want to mm -hmm. figure out how to go from uh, Speed Tree to Unreal. To Unreal. So, but we finally have a couple new Speed Tree titles coming for the workshop. So it's been a while. Oh, that's cool. Speed Tree titles, yeah. Are any of them going to Unreal, or are they just talking about the software? Uh, that is the intent. Yeah. So I think cool. the first title will just be like intro to tree and then the second one will be like how to do a hero asset with wind and stuff and send that to Ooh. Maya um, but then the intent is to also have how to go to Unreal with it. Nice. So I don't That's know awesome. Two titles or three so but uh, yeah so that's kind of what I've been working on in my free time. It's pretty fun you know a lot of rock mm -hmm. sculpting so you know but it's all <laughs> just take the you know, I think the thing just for the stream was just to show people that, you know, it all starts with really, really simple stuff. Mm hmm Getting your composition set up. Yeah. What's the light going to be? The lighting, like final you have lighting? Like, you have like that orb in the middle. Oh, that. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm going to definitely make something where that light is. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know what yet. So if I go back to here, I think it's because what I'm thinking that I might have. Let me zoom out a little bit. We are like I've got this tunnel in here. Mm -hmm. So there's a tunnel, and then that tunnel comes out of this wall. Mm -hmm. So my idea was that. You know, basically, this on the outside of the wall might just kind of be ocean or water, and this could be just like this infinite wall that kind of just goes forever. Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of, and then with a waterfall or water coming out of it, and then we kind of go in and end up in this little stream. And then the little stream, the water that's in here will be coming out of something, and I'm not quite sure yet what that will be. Yeah. So, and uh, but that's where this light will be. So it could be like a a big stone head type of thing it could be something more architectural mm -hmm. um but i'm not sure yet so i haven't had you know like this i haven't had a lot of time to work on this unfortunately so but at least i got the bulk of the geo blocked out yeah yeah it seems like it are you going to try to do the fbx thing to mixer or are you going to do individual pieces or um, that's another, yeah, workflow I want to try out. So I have experimented yeah. a little bit with sending multiple objects to Mixer and it seems to mm -hmm. be fine. I'm just curious where the limit is. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, can I actually send 40 objects to Mixer where they all need 4K textures with multiple layers? Right. Is that going to work? <laughs> when I tried it, it worked for a oh. while and then it got really slow, mostly on opening and exporting like when i finally did my exports of like all right i'm exporting these all at 4k or or even 2k because it has right. to write like all the layers and all the different things it took like a good amount of time to just like like go take a break and watch you know a 30 minute show while it exports all your maps kind of a thing i mean I so that was also ram related it could be so, yeah, because this computer only has 32 gigs of RAM. My other computer has 192. So mm -hmm. I would assume that's going to be a big Different impact scale. on it. But certain things I don't need, like, you know, like this background terrain, I don't need it to be with everything else. 
like this right. mid-ground terrain. I don't need to texture it with everything else. Um, it's really the ones that are close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I'm going to be able to just make like a master smart material for like small, medium, large. Yeah. And then sort of batch process them up, hopefully. Yeah, I think you should be able to. Um, but, uh, and then there's a few things I want to experiment with. Cause doing pileable textures with multiple masks, like layered materials, I haven't done a ton of in Unreal either. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, I'm just... Like with Vertex or with a mask mask, a RGB mask? Probably with a RGB mask. Cool. So, so yeah, I'm just, just kind of like a personal project just to experiment with workflow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, because ultimately for environments that are going to have a lot of pieces, doing them one at a time where you don't know the context of how they relate to each other is, in Mixer is kind of problematic as opposed to the way I'm used to doing stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm used to texturing things while rendering in viewport in Maya. And so kind of I know how everything relates as I texture stuff. So. And what was the process you would have used like for the Redshift? Like obviously not Mixer. So you would have used... For red, well, redshift, redshift, I'd start with the ground and texture it and do displacements all just via, you know, using mega scans textures from bridge, but bringing them to Maya just, you know, and trying different ones out. Mm. And then, uh, but for things that are, you know, like if this is going to be a foggy environment, for example, it's like it doesn't really matter what the texture is, even on something that's that far away. No, yeah. So I, I you know, so I just throw it, you know, tileable texture of something rocky on there as a displacement in a normal and in the fog it would probably be fine because yeah. fog yeah. obscures detail and then for the close objects um, you know I probably would just uh, I guess the point is is that like with Maya it's not a big deal to experiment because I'm just pulling textures from my local texture library but mm -hmm. with Unreal it's the whole thing where you're or a mixer where you're committing like you're going to Mixer and committing to something and then sending it to Unreal and committing it to the project. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like doodling as opposed to more of like a production pipeline. Mm -hmm. and with I just wonder if there's like a doodling. in between though, because you could do the same thing and just bring the textures in um, the, the same way you would, right? Well, probably. Yeah, but there's not like an easy way to just download them, I, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but we'll experiment. That's cool. Somebody was asking, do you use alphas for details? Is that a thing from the past that I keep doing? Uh, no, definitely alphas are a thing. Alphas are a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah, so like, you know, all of this stuff that's going on back here on, you know, these tapes, that's all based on using alphas. That would take forever to sculpt by hand. And the so same thing with this. Yeah. So yeah, I've showed this before, but like in my alpha palette, you know, I've got all these alphas that I've made. So I go into World Machine. It's just a whole bunch of, they're basically displacement maps exported from World Machine. Mm -hmm. But then they make great alphas. Right. And I've made Sculpting a lot of alphas. them. Yeah. So What's, what resolution are they? Because if they're from World Machine, I imagine they're big. They're 2K. Oh, okay. You almost never need alphas in ZBrush to be more than 2K. <clears throat> because 2000 by 2000 pixels is 4 million. Mm -hmm. And so that means a 2K alpha can displace 4 million polygons. Interesting. So if you have a plane that's 4 million polygons, and an alpha that's 2K, you could drag that alpha to fill the entire plane. And if it's 4 million polys, you're not going to see any pixelation mm -hmm. because there's one pixel in the alpha for every polygon. It's interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah. So the idea of having like a 8K alpha would be 64 million points, and that would never be right. Needed. Right. That's so if you high. figure that you're drag, if you're generally dragging alphas onto like a small area, and the area you're dragging it onto is never more than like a hundred thousand polys in that area, 
then that's where like even a 1k alpha is enough for, you know and alphas take up ram so you know the performance of alphas is related to their resolution cool so pretty much i think all of them like all my i have all these alphas that are great that i made in filter forge and uh these are all 2k also Yeah, that's a lot. Does it take your ZBrush a long time to load? Well, no, like because these are these are on Lightbox. They're not loaded in. Oh, uh, they're not in the startup. Yeah. Okay. The only one I swap which ones are in in the Z startup Z alphas folder. Like you'll see, these are already in here. Mm -hmm. I'll if I know I'm going to be sculpting with alphas, and then I might like pre put them in that directory just so they do load on startup because it, they're just there. Right. Because so annoying in lightbox when you go to an alpha you have to like double click like a bunch of times yeah <laughs> to get it to load yeah um but yeah so like if i go into this dude right here just go to standard and drag rectangle and lightbox Go to World Machine. So yeah, if I grab one of these and double click, like it doesn't load. Double click again, then it does. So huh. annoying. <laughs> Just quadruple click. Yeah, but if I drag this on, then you can see mm -hmm. how it looks cool because it's you know a nice alpha generated from World Machine. So. Yeah, I think it's also the quality of the alphas that you have right there is because it's from World Machine. It's not like some of the other alphas I've seen that are like a desaturated, contrasted photo of an orange peel. Yeah, it's like yeah, actually, yeah. But it's I don't I don't really have I, I those alphas tend to only be good with very low Z intensity for like high frequency. Yeah detail noise that's not, or detail that's just not deep but if you want alphas that will allow you to do something like this mm -hmm. and look good then a taking a photo of something and making a grayscale tends to just be full of noise yeah you know while this looks you know you can see how big i can drag it and it's just fine totally well Alex, it's five o'clock we did well, it. What a quick, what a quick stream! <laughs> what a quick stream that was. <laughs> oh, God, so annoying. Uh, that's all right. All right, um, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining Art Jam. Thank you, Alex, for joining Art Jam. Yeah, yeah sorry about that. But you oh no, worries. It's not your fault at all. <laughs> all right. You well, we will. Well, uh, we'll, we will be back next week. I should have done this layout. We will be back next week, uh, 2 to 5 p.m. Pacific time, doing some more Art Jam. So uh, come and see us then. And thanks again, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Later.